to reduce the clutter on your table, you need a direction. So something like Prep Ladder gives us that direction. You have some 40 hours or 50 hours of Ghana. I have given all the content of pharmacology. I have contributed the entire content for internal medicine. I have created the content for PSM. You can trust the questions and explanations to be genuine. Detailed explanations will help you solve the different variations of the same question. Textbook references will help you authenticate an answer. I have created this content after close inspection of the previous year questions. I have put in my 14 years of experience into creating these questions. Includes the latest exam questions, questions on the recent updates, as well as the image based questions. All questions are according to recent exam trends and difficulty level. So the software would be exactly like the real exam. All your queries come directly to me. So if you have any kind of doubt, you can ask me directly. I'll be solving all your microbiology related queries. You can ask anything about the subject, doesn't have to be only about a question. I'm always available for you whenever you need help. You can have a counseling session with me. So we've put in features to make sure you keep studying. The Preplader app will never let you fall behind. Solving OBS and Gynec questions will be easy for you after this. You would not have to worry about anatomy at all. You will be able to solve most of the questions in PSA. Most pathology questions in the exams are going to be derivatives or the repeats from these questions. 1 lakh competitors. 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 It's good to see that everyone in the team is giving their best. This is the best team of faculties that could have been put together. This is the biggest innovation in medical education. We are obsessed with making sure that you get the best value out of every minute spent on the Preplader app. Really happy to be a part of Team Preplader. You know, if there was something like Preplader when I was preparing, I will, I'm, I'm sure that I would have prepared much better because I would have known what to read. Let us look at some cases of urine extravasation due to some injuries and uh, we will discuss three major cases and later one more. So you are taking a sedital section on the male pelvis now and uh, looking into the details you will find this is uh, sometime the urine inside the peritoneal cavity causing ascites. So sometimes urine can come into the peritoneal cavity causing ascites. How? Because there was some fundal rupture of the urinary bladder with the rupture of the peritoneum and urine coming inside the peritoneal cavity causing ascites. Case number one. And what is case number two? There can be rupture of the membranous urethra and when there is a rupture of the membranous urethra which is above the perineal membrane above the perineal membrane in that case the urine can actually come into retro pubic space of regius retro pubic space of regius and it is in the para vesicle space para vesicle around the urinary bladder but it cannot go inside the peritoneal cavity why it cannot go inside the peritoneal cavity? It is extra peritoneal extravasation of urine. Why it is not going inside peritoneum? Because peritoneum cover the anterior abdominal wall, cover the fundus of the bladder, cover the upper part of the rectum and then go to the posterior abdominal wall. So it is intact. Yeah, it is intact. So that is why this urine remain extra peritoneal extravasation of urine and rupture of the membrane urethra, which could be due to fracture pelvis. So there can be fracture pelvis leading to rupture of membrane urethra. Yeah. The third patient is a uh, straddle injury and rupture of bulbous urethra. So straddle injury, what is straddle injury? We will see that. But uh, straddle injury 
the urine can be at four places now. This is a rupture of the urethra below perineal membrane and urine at four places. What four places? So you have to understand that there is a scarpa's fascia on the anterior abdominal wall and the scarpa's fascia is continuous with the penile fascia and it is continuous with the scrotal fascia and the scrotal fascia is continuous with the colles fascia and colles fascia is continuous with the perineal membrane so so there's a closed space and urine at four places if the rupture was below perineal membrane bulbous spongy urethra rupture so which four places you have urine in the superficial perineal pouch below the perineal membrane and also going into the scrotum penis and also going anterior abdominal wall anterior abdominal wall under the scarpa's fascia yeah and in front of the pubis bone yeah in front of this pubis bone in front of this pubis bone it is going so these are all cases which we have to discuss now this is uh, a case number one there's a fundus of the rupture of the bladder but when there's a fundus of the where the rupture of the fundus of urinary bladder then this could be fundus along with the peritoneal rupture and urine can go inside peritoneal cavity so you are trying to say it is ascites yeah this is the answer yeah can you discuss this again what is happening yeah let me discuss but peritoneal cavity is your answer see when there's a rupture of the fundus of the urinary bladder it will also rupture it may also rupture peritoneum and when the peritoneum is ruptured you see the urine coming into peritoneal cavity causing ascites so this is your case that was case number one what about the case number two three as you see in this diagram this area is pubis symphysis anteriorly and and this is the urodental diaphragm in the deep panel pouch so there will be this uh, membrana urethra in the deep pouch then you can also see this is the prostatic urethra passing through the prostate and then you can also see that this is the bulbous spongy urethra becoming penile spongy urethra below the perineal membrane and the resocial perineal pouch this is for the orientation now see what is happening the previous case was ascites intraperitoneal extravasation of urine but here what will happen if prostatic urethra is ruptured which is not so commonly seen but what will happen what will happen if the membranous urethra is ruptured which is quite commonly seen in pelvic fractures when there is a pelvic fracture there can be rupture of membranous urethra in the deep panel pouch and in straddle injury there can be rupture of the bulbous spongy urethra most of the urethral ruptures are actually at the junction of the posterior and anterior urethra who is anterior urethra the spongy urethra and who is the posterior urethra membranous urethra so junction of anterior posterior urethra is the most common clinically seen ruptures yeah rupture of membranous urethra and junction of the membranous urethra and spongy urethra that is the most commonly ruptured urethra seen in clinical practice okay so you are telling that uh, urine can be intraperitoneal yes it can be but in this case it is extraperitoneal let us look at the detail it is extraperitoneal now yeah around the urinary bladder and what about this one this is the third case which is rupture of bulbous spongy urethra let us look at uh, the same thing in this diagram which we have discussed because uh, we have to understand the structure of penis magnified so you are magnifying the structure of penis where you already have told that there is some corpus cavernosum yeah corpus cavernosum is there but that is for blood and uh, urine can be extravasating from this urethra penile spongy urethra you have to understand some fascias here basically there is a scarpa's fascia which is coming on the anterior abdominal wall and scarpa's fascia which is on the anterior abdominal wall will continue with the penile fascia and penile fascia continues with the 
scrotal fascia and scrotal fascia is continuous with the collis fascia and collis fascia will be continuous with the perineal membrane here. So the thing is there is one more fascia we want to talk about and that is deep fascia. See what you are seeing now is quite outside superficial fascia. Scarpa's fascia is a part of superficial fascia. Here penile fascia is datos fascia, it is superficial. Even scrotal fascia is datos, it is superficial. But there is a deep fascia of penis and what is that? There will be a bux fascia, a bux fascia. So you now want to discuss some bux fascia? Yeah, bux fascia. See, if the bux fascia is intact, then if the bux fascia is intact and if you get a case of penile fracture, sometimes there are cases of penile fracture and uh, bleeding and uh, urine coming out, but within the shaft of the penile penis. So if there is an intact bux fascia, which is the fascia, then the blood and urine will be confined to penile shaft only. Yes. And what if the bux fascia was ruptured? Bux fascia is deep fascia and if it is ruptured, then the urine and blood can come out and then will be at four places. Which four places? Number one, it is already in the penile shaft. Number two, it will be in the scrotum. Number three, in the social penile pouch. And number four, in the anterior abdominal wall. So this is the description you want to see. But let me first look at the penis layers. And you have taken a transverse section of the penis. So we have taken a transverse section of penis now. Yeah. To see the bux fascia. Yeah, bux fascia we have to see. See, this is the transverse section of the penis you have taken and you are telling. This is the bux fascia which is actually deep fascia. Then who is the superficial if this is the deep fascia? Superficial we already have told. The daughter's fascia is superficial fascia, continuous with the scarpa's fascia. So this is the superficial fascia, the daughter's fascia. Yeah. And then you are telling that there is some deep fascia, the bux fascia. What is the importance of bux fascia? See, can you find that there is some corpora cavernosa containing some blood? which will be filled with blood when there is parasympathetic nerve agencies working for ve venodilation, erection of penis, all that. This is corpora cavernosa. And what about corpus spongiosum? When you say corpus spongiosum, you have the spongy urethra inside. So this is the spongy urethra inside? Yeah. Okay. What about that? See, if the in bux fascia is intact and there is a penile fracture leading to bleeding within the shaft of penis or urine extravasation, this urine or blood cannot escape the penile shaft until this fascia, bux fascia is intact. This is what you just remember. Okay, fine. What is next thing? Next thing is a question, one of the aims question asking, you have injury to the urethra above the perineal membrane. You mean to say above the perineal membrane means membrane urethra rupture? Uh, some pelvic fracture, rupture of membrane urethra. So, if it is rupture of the membrane urethra, where the urine cannot go is the question. So, you are telling that uh, this is something above the panel membrane means rupture of the membrane urethra and uh, where the urine cannot go. Before I answer this question, let us look at the diagram here. Rupture of the membrane urethra can send the urine at three places. Which three places it can send the urine? Number one, you already have seen. It will go paravesical space. Paravesical space means around the urinary bladder. Yes, but it will be extra peritoneal, extra vasation of urine. So it is not uh, going inside the peritoneal cavity. Why? Because peritoneum is intact. So you are telling that this is the peritoneum anterior abdominal wall and on the fundus of the bladder and on the anterior side of the rectum, then the posterior abdominal wall. Yeah. So peritoneum is intact, so urine cannot go inside the peritoneal cavity. That will give you the answer. Understand this urine will be in the para space, including this uh, retro 
pubic space of radius behind the pubis bone. So behind the pubis bone is some space here, you see. This is behind the pubis bone, you have some space which is called retropubic space of radius. That is where the urine can be there. Then two more places this urine can go. You mean to say rupture of the membrane shetra urine expulsion at three places? Yeah, one you have seen, paravesicle. Now number two and three. So you are telling this is rupture of membrane shetra here? Yes. Within the deep anal pouch? Yes. This urine can be in the deep pouch. And it can also come to social pouch. But how can it come to superficial pouch? If there is associated rupture of perineal membrane, it can come to social pouch. Or you are telling there is some pelvic fracture. Yes. And associated rupture of perineal membrane now. Yes. Then urine can come to social pouch. Yes. In some cases, it will be seen. So you are trying to say when there is a pelvic fracture, there is rupture of membrane shetra. Urine is in the paravesical space, yeah, but not in the peritoneal cavity. No, it cannot go there because peritoneum is intact. And this rupture of membrane shetra, urine can be in the deep pouch, yes, and can go to social pouch also associated rupture of parental membrane. How often that happens, rupture of parental membrane? Maybe not very often, but it can happen. You should know this, then only you can answer the question. This is injury male urethra above the parental membrane. I saw this question already. Yes, it was a pelvic fracture. Tell me what is the exception. So you are talking about rupture of membrane urethra. Yeah, three places. But it cannot go into, yes, the peritoneal cavity. Why it cannot go into peritoneal cavity? Because peritoneum is intact. Now, I'll remove this choice. What is your answer? Rupture of membrane shetra, yes, three places, yeah, three places, but what is your answer? I think this is the answer now, yes, because you are assuming that it is a pelvic fracture, rupture membrane shetra with intact pineal membrane. So in this case, you are assuming that the pineal membrane was intact, then it cannot come here. So this question has double answer, yes, it has double answer, but D is better than C. And why D is better than C? Because Peritoneum is never ruptured in this case. Peritoneum is intact all the time. But, but pineal membrane may be ruptured. That is why. D is a better answer than C. Now, let us look at the third patient. It's a young boy, 16 year old and having some straddle injury. Straddle injury? What is straddle injury? He was riding a bike on a bumpy road and landed on his urethra or oh, riding a bike on bunk, bumpy road yeah and landing on the urethra yes rupture of bulbous urethra below pineal membrane yes okay so straddle injury legs apart and falling on some surface yeah legs apart and falling on some surface straddle injury so rupture bulbous urethra below the pineal membrane. I think it is at four places. Yeah, four places. But tell me, what is your answer? I think my answer is this. Understand that when there is a rupture bulbous spongy urethra below pineal membrane, it will be at four places. What four places? It will be the superficial pineal pouch below the pineal membrane and scrotum and Penis, spinal shaft, and anterior abdominal wall, passing urine passing in front of the pubic bone. Four places. Now, this urine, which is at four places below the pineal membrane, cannot go to three places. Which three places it cannot go? See, this urine cannot enter above the perineal membrane to deep pouch. This urine cannot go to deep perineal pouch. Why? Prevented by perineal membrane. This urine cannot go to deep pouch, it will remain in social pouch. This urine cannot go to ischiorectal fossa, prevented by Colley's fascia. So Colley's fascia will not allow this urine to enter the ischiorectal fossa, well, that's what. And this urine cannot enter the thigh, prevented by the deep fascia of the thigh, which is called fascia lata. So fascia lata is the deep fascia of the thigh and it is preventing the urine from entering the thigh. 
So it cannot go to three places, it will be stuck with four places. If you know that, tell me the answer. Straddle injury, rupture bulbous spongy ratio can go to four places but cannot go to three places. So what is the answer? Of course, scrotum. Now when you say your answer is scrotum, it can be three more places. Why it cannot go here? This urine cannot go here because prevented by college fascia. And why this urine cannot go to the deep pouch? It cannot go to deep perineal pouch because it is prevented by the perineal membrane. And why this urine cannot go to the thigh? Because it is prevented by the deep facial thigh, which is called facial udder. So once you have that kind of orientation, you will be now keeping your answer as scrotum or three more places, total four places. Understand that uh, in the anterior abdominal wall, there is superficial fascia having two layers. There is anterior and posterior. Anterior is fatty and it is called campers fascia. And then the posterior is deeper, which is called as the membranous or scarpa's fascia. So, we are talking about the superficial fascia having two layers in the lower abdominal wall. In the lower abdominal wall, anterior abdominal wall, you will have the social fascia having two layers. One is the fatty, which is the campers fascia. Deep to that is scarpa's fascia, which is membranous. Now, follow. The membranous layer of the superficial fascia into the penile fascia, that is dartos fascia of the penis and then continues with the dartos fascia of the scrotum, social fascia of the scrotum, penile and scrotal fascia is continuous with the colles fascia and colles fascia then merge with the perineal membrane on the perineal body at the floor of the deep perineal pouch. So this colles fascia merge with the perineal body and at the floor of the deep pouch is panel membrane there. Yeah, that is the basics. Now, go into detail. As you go into detail, you will find again that we are uh, tracing what is called as the membranous fascia, scarpa's fascia. And scarpa's fascia is continuous with the datos fascia on the penis. And that is continuous with datos fascia on the scrotum. And that is continuous with the panel body, panel membrane there. But I also told you about this uh, deeper one. And who is the deeper one? As you can see here, I am showing, this is the Burke's fascia now. So Burke's fascia, this one, yes, covering the penis deeper. Yeah. And uh, the point was, if the Burke's fascia is intact, the urine and uh, blood of the penile shaft cannot escape the shaft. And if Burke's fascia is ruptured, if it is ruptured, then urine and blood can be in the penile shaft, in the scrotum, in the social panel pouch, and also anterior abdominal wall, passing into the pubis bone and uh, deep to the scarpa's fascia. Now we will be making a diagram to discuss all the patients which we have seen. So we'll make a diagram for all the patients which we have seen. Yes, let's do that. You are uh, looking at the sagittal section of the male pelvis and when you look at the societal section of the male pelvis you'll see that this is the urinary bladder and that is the urethra and this is the prostate and this is the deep perineal pouch. So you are telling that this is the societal section of the male pelvis and this is the side view of urinary bladder and the urethra and the prostate in the deep perineal pouch. I think it's a perineal body here. Yeah, that is the perineal body attaching to the perineal membrane posteriorly. So that is perineal membrane. Yes, this is the perineal membrane, which is the floor of the deep perineal pouch and attaching to perineal membrane posteriorly is the perineal body. And then, then you tell this is a prosthetic urethra, the membranous urethra, and, and then you will continue downward, the bulbous spongy urethra. If there is a bulbous spongy urethra, I think this is the penile spongy urethra. Yeah, that will be penile spongy urethra opening outside. So this is penile spongy urethra now, opening outside. Yes, it will be inside the penis, the uh, penile shaft. Okay, if you say so. What is the next thing? Next thing, you have to tell 
that this is the pubis bone here. Pubis bone here, yes, this is pubis bone. And uh, attaching to pubis bone is the muscle we are calling as external oblique muscle. So this is the external oblique muscle on the anterior abdominal wall, yeah. External oblique muscle on the anterior abdominal wall is now attaching to the pubis bone there, yes. Okay, what is in front of the external oblique muscle? What is in front of external oblique muscle? Scarpa's fascia? Yes, scarpa's fascia now. So this is the scarpa's fascia, which is superficial fascia, the membranous layer of superficial fascia. And this uh, scarpa's fascia, which is a superficial fascia, is continuous with the fascia of the penis and fascia of the scrotum. And then it is continuous with the perineal body and perineal membrane there, creating a closed space. So this is a closed space now, how come? Because you will see there is some fibrous tissue between the deep pouch and the pubis bone. So there is some fibrous tissue between the deep perineal pouch and the pubis bone. Yeah. <coughs> so it is a closed space. What closed space is that? See, if urine is extra vasating build the perineal membrane it will be at four places where yeah. number one social pouch and number two the scrotum and number three the penile shaft and number four anterior abdominal wall oh that four places yeah below perineal membrane yeah that's what we wanted to know now once you said that what is this uh, fascia here you are calling as this is penile fascia and uh, you can also call it as dartos fascia. Dartos fascia is social fascia of the penis which is continuing to the scrotal fascia and when you say it is the scrotal fascia basically it is also dartos fascia. Okay if you say so what is it continuous with? Continuous with colleagues fascia and what is colleagues fascia continuous with? The perineal body and perineal membrane there. Now we have seen one more and it was uh, deep fascia and it was covering the penis and we are calling it as the box fascia. This is the box fascia. So now you are telling this is the box fascia which is the deep fascia of the penis and covering the penile shaft and if the box fascia is intact then the urine and blood cannot escape the penile shaft. For example, if there is a penile fracture with intact box fascia. This is the box fascia. So our point is that if there is a penile fracture with intact box fascia, the urine or maybe the blood cannot escape the penile shaft. It will stay within the penile shaft prevented by the box fascia. And whatever it is ruptured. If the box fascia is ruptured, then of course urine will be at four places. It will be not only in the penile shaft, but it will go into the scrotum, into the surgical panel pouch, and it is also in the anterior abdominal wall. Okay, what about that uh, rupture of the bulbous spongy urethra? If you say rupture of the bulbous spongy urethra, it can be this. And where is the urine? It is in the surgical pouch and in the scrotum and in the penile shaft and an anterior abdominal wall. So four places, yes. Why it cannot go to three places? It cannot go to three places because you see, this is the perineal membrane. And what is the perineal membrane preventing this urine to come into, into deep pouch? So this urine cannot come into deep pouch preventer perineal membrane. Number two, this urine cannot go into ischiorectal fossa posteriorly because preventive work all is fascia. And this urine cannot go into thigh prevented by some fascia out of the thigh. So it is at four places, but it cannot go to the three places, which is the thigh or the ischiorectal fossa or the deep pouch. Okay, what about that rupture of membranous urethra, which could be some pelvic fracture? If you say rupture of the membrane urethra, which could be due to some pelvic fracture, let me show you. This is the injury. If that is the injury above the perineal membrane, urine can be at three places. So there is a pelvic fracture, yes. 
and leading to some rupture of membrane should throw up the perineal membrane. Yeah, it can be at three places. Number one, in the deep pouch, and number two, in the social pouch. But how can it come to superficial pouch? See, this urine will be in the deep pouch understood, but how can it come to social pouch? It can come to social pouch if there is associated rupture of pineal membrane, which can happen in pelvic fracture. So, rupture of urethra about the pineal membrane, yeah, membrane is rupture of urethra, right. You in the deep pouch and can also come to social pouch if there is some associated rupture of pineal membrane. How often that happen? Doesn't happen so often, but can happen, then can be there. And what is the three place, third place? It is here. What is there? Perivesical space. Perivesical. So you are telling that when there was rupture of the membrane of the urine can be perivesical space around the urinary bladder? Yes, it is around the urinary bladder, including this retro pubic space of regius in front of urinary bladder. So in front of urinary bladder, but behind the pubic bone, yeah, behind the pubis bone, but in front of urinary bladder is the retropubic space of regius, that is where urine is. Can this urine in rupture of membrane and shirethra go into peritoneal cavity? No. Why it cannot go into peritoneal cavity? Because peritoneum covering anterior abdominal wall, fundus of bladder, and posterior abdominal wall. This is peritoneal cavity. So you are telling that this is the peritoneum and which is covering anterior abdominal wall, fundus of the urinary bladder, and posterior abdominal wall. Okay, so it is intact. Yeah. If there is a rupture of membrane of the urine can be only extra peritoneal, extra vasation. And what about that patient who had some bomb exposure, bomb explosion exposure? In that case, actually, we had the associated rupture of the peritoneum also. Urine going into the peritoneal cavity and it was fundal rupture of urinary bladder with the associated rupture of peritoneum and causing ascites. So that is a different scenario altogether there. So this is one case in front of you with intact box fascia, penile fracture. So there is some penile fracture now, yes, fracture. And hematoma they are asking, yes. I think if the box fascia is intact then, uh, yes. Confined to penile shaft? Yeah, correct. Can you tell me one thing? When this will be the answer? The four places, penis, scrotum, abdominal wall. Yeah, four places. When? When will that be answered? <laughs> I think when there is a rupture of box fascia. Yes, correct. Keep your answer as choice number D and look at this. This is no rupture of box fascia, which is your question. And in that case, this is urine and blood confined to penile shaft only. But on the other hand, on the other hand, if the box fascia was uh, ruptured, see what happens. If the box fascia was ruptured, then you see urine is not only in the penile shaft, but it is also into the scrotum and it is also in the cerebral penile pouch and it is also in the anterior abdominal wall or it is at four places then rupture of box fascia four places just like rupture of bulbous spongy urethra below pineal membrane <music>